name is Joseph Warnerlis. I'm a professor of engineering architecture and computer science. And what I'm going to show you now is emerging of these two worlds of architecture and high tech. That's your screen. Uh, so on my website, you can find things I've done in, in both of these worlds of computing and robotics, but I want to go mainly into the architecture here and uh, show you things in there. A uh, number of lecture series, uh, but most importantly, I want to show you student projects here. Uh, we've had a number of annual year-end critiques and videos, and you can watch all that. I'm going to go back in history a little bit and just start at the beginning here. Um, <clears throat> So in the, before 2012, uh, we used uh, Rhinoceros and uh, Flamingo, and uh, we had a real world uh, project students did. Dr. Ricci and I supervised this. Uh, she's the director of fine arts, and this was a real world project for renovating the lobby of Steinman. My students rendered that. And uh, this is 2006, 2007. Then in 2008, a uh, student uh, helped render this lab that I'm in here now and helped get funding for this building for $22 million and make this a robotics and machine intelligence lab as well as an architectural studio. Uh, and then there's other projects he did with uh, also helping coach Slosher with renovations to, uh, at the time, Thompson Jim. He was our head coach for many years. And uh, uh, this, this predates by the Bauer Center. This is all, this is all 12, uh, 14 years ago. <clears throat> This is 2022, I'm, I'm doing this now. There's other things here I won't show you that are in uh, built models of, uh, oops, this, uh, these are physical models made of balls, but I just want to show you the ones that are made with uh, high tech means. So Flamingo, Rhinoceros, and then Minecraft. So uh, the students have already seen in here videos of some of this. And this was uh, students uh, and myself and, and my children, my, primarily my son running a couple servers and building a lot of things. I'll show a couple of videos in here and also one student, Ricky, uh, Ricky Sturtz, who uh, <coughs> made this first one. I'll play right here, this little video of before we ever had Sports Fitness and Wellness Center. This is in 2012, uh, before I ever presented things to the trustees and lobbied to make the Sports Fitness and Wellness Center work with my students, which we'll talk about. Uh, this was the competition here, so uh, of high schools. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so uh, that was a competition we had. Um, actually, there's other videos that go with this on this server where high school students came in and we had a competition of different kinds of sports, fitness, and wellness center. Then we have, uh, to show you real quickly, uh, there's not a video with this. So actually, I think there. Oh, this is just a picture of a, a circuit, a number of digital type circuits. This combination a lot. People did simple CPUs and things. You can do that with the uh, electromechanical parts of Minecraft. And then this is a, uh, is a, a server that uh, my son ran for, and I'll say that in a second. And then also this one here, this is a in freshman seminar for several years in a row. We built first Japanese towns, or secondly, Japanese towns. We also had other sustainable towns that they built uh, in here, uh, not freshman seminar class. Um, and I'll show you one of, uh, this was a team build that we did uh, on Ricky's server, actually Ricky Sturtz's server. And uh, I, I have to have a disclaimer. I didn't name the server here. He named it a little bit of controversial thing. So you'll see that. on the Lisbon Town College campus.
this cuts off here. I, I was just getting to know my freshman. This is Bryn Kirsch. She went on uh, to graduate here and she was architectural studies minor, did later things in Revit and now uh, works professionally using Revit uh, for her job. She graduated several years ago. <laughs> We still keep in contact. Okay, uh, connected on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay, and then there's, uh, I won't play all these here, but this, some of the world. So uh, this were green towns where we uh, had green towns in here. Oh, here's actually a team build we did for the Hackman of the wind up. Uh, also, we did a team build for the Masters Center. And in that case, we had 50 people packed in here and students go down the hallway, students in their dorm rooms. Uh, Dr. Silverstein's cognitive science class, uh, plus students from my other classes. And I could just show you one little video clip here of that, because there's a number of clips of that. Let's see. Uh, oh, on here. So this is my YouTube channel. Uh, I won't stay in here long. But in this course that we're in right now, we're in the uh, intro high tech lectures, and I put a couple of these YouTube. Uh, Minecraft videos down in here with these 43 videos that we have. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is progress six here. And what did I do? Progress one. Progress six. This is the master center. Oh, wait. Oh, we saw that one already. We saw that. Uh, this one here. I thought that said Master Sun. Oh, that's Hackman. Okay. Uh, so we saw those two, and then I'll just show these here. Uh, these couple ones here. Uh, this is a multi world server, both survival and uh, creative in a private world, too. Lots of warps. Also, uh, protections for stopping cursing, stopping lava placing, TNT placing, uh, a little jail to temporarily ban people and put them in there, or permanently ban them if they're doing bad things. Uh, ran a concurrent SQL server that I had to configure to using LogBlock to record people were griefing and then un undo their what they did, and then you know get their IP address and put them in a the little jail or ban them. If bulletin board for people directing them around. The FYS world was a separate world in itself where the students built in that. You can see the owners there. One of them is in the room right now, along with another person from England and one from Canada. Freshman. I guess I'll look around here first. Son's designs. Uh, he was listed as one of the top 100 Minecraft designers on, uh, I forget what site it was for a while. He made this whole town, actually. And the Zeppelin. of people from Australia on here, uh, England, Ireland, Spain. Um, 
just saying this was a world server with um, uh, both creative and survival. I believe there were four different worlds, maybe five at one time. Uh, this town and that Zeppelin is designed by my son and um, when he was 12 or 13. And um, he became one of the top 100 Minecraft designers uh, for a while on the big site, I forget the name of it. You'll get some of his worlds off of there. And we had children from Australia and England and Canada, uh, the three originating children who uh, made this whole server were from Canada, England, and America. And then my daughter, when she was a little girl, she played with a little girl from Ireland, one from Spain in a special world with protections. Uh, you may not be able to hear me over the music in the beginning, but uh, we had uh, different plugins uh, for censorship, for cursing, for not allowing lava placement or TNT placing. Also uh, ran a concurrent Minecraft or a SQL server to log all actions. So people were griefing, building where they weren't supposed to or taking things down. I could undo that, uh, figure out who it was, grab their IP address, ban them if I needed to, or put them in a little jail that we had for a while. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't build anything in any of these. I was just the moderator. This is back when Notch owned all of Minecraft before he sold it for, I believe, $2.1 billion, some ridiculous number to Microsoft. At that time, the APIs were accessible. So there was a bucket group that developed all these different plugins that you could use and configure. Uh, and then you'd have to upgrade all those plugins as well as the Minecraft each time it needed to be upgraded. Uh, then I believe that bucket group was actually hired by Microsoft and some of these are available again now. So you can write your own plugins and mods. I haven't done that, but we have now other people running Minecraft server here at Elizabeth Town College. Uh, everything you're seeing here is from 10 or more years ago. I think the Australians built all these statues. We had uh, uh, some good, good friends. My, uh, you know, everybody had good friends from Australia. At one time, although originally uh, these what originated these servers being made by myself and my son was uh, some experience on uh, one uh, a big server out of Australia where uh, they were playing uh, favorites to whoever was in the local neighborhood there and would up people in ranks. Oh, I should mention that we had a ranking system here. So there, uh, there were six or seven levels of rank based on the quality of your work and and then, you know, the 160 warps and all kinds of things. Uh, but then, then when we left, uh, uh, my son left uh, and others left the big server in Australia, I won't mention the name, they sent a griefing team uh, to <laughs> an organized griefing team to destroy our server. And I let them just run around burning everything for a while. And I, I had saved the whole copy of the things. And then I got all their IP addresses and I uh, actually, I looked up where their homes were and I was going to tell their parents, but I thought that would go a little too far. And I, I called the owner of the server who was an IT guy in Australia. I told him what I thought about all that. But, uh, but it's all in good fun. But it's not fun if somebody destroys your stuff. So I, I put protections here. And then eventually we whitelisted in the, the servers and then we just got tired of uh, whitelisting means you have all these certain people allowed on there. <laughs> but there were world servers for a while and that was fun when people behave, not everybody's going to behave. So this is a rendition of Frank Lloyd Wright's Roby House.
And you can see all the warps. Uh, uh, so you can you can set locations that you can warp to. And the, the, the people that earned the rank of, uh, I forget what the level was, but the moderator, administrator rank, they could set warps for people and give certain privileges. Um, so we limited the, the abilities at each rank of what you could do. And then you had to earn rank and then you go up. And the administrators could tweak all kinds of things, including setting warps. And, you had world edit for a while, which is dangerous because you can wipe out entire villages and things like that. So you can set the time of day or night. You generate a biome. So there's a seed that you generate your world with. And that seed uh, will give you certain uh, topography and vegetation and animals. Uh, the, there's AI and the animals here. They breed and they hunt. Um, there's also mobs, I forget what they're called, but there's Endermen. Oh, there's things that come around, creepy things that'll wreck your stuff um, and, and things that will hunt you. Uh, and, and I could turn off the mobs at times. <clears throat> uh, but they would be in both creative and survival worlds, I believe. I'm forgetting now, but. A survival world, in survival world, you have to make everything yourself. You have to make your own tools. You have to mine everything. And it takes a lot longer. And in creative world, you have a whole tablet full of, uh, of, of, of blocks and tools and materials and windows and things. So uh, you don't have to recreate your world. Some people just like to play survival. And then there's faction servers too, which my son was on for a little bit. And yeah, I mean, that's fun to destroy each other's stuff, but I'd rather see everything creative. Um, it's a shame to see worlds built and then people just intentionally warring with each other. But it wasn't much better when I was a kid. We actually had BB gun wars and things. This is a Zeppelin inside of a Zeppelin. Let's see, this one has about two more minutes and then we'll go on to some uh, some other things. Make sure you're stuck inside the Zeppelin here for a little bit more. Fast forward, it's me wandering inside, around inside the Zeppelin. You see the Zeppelin from the outside, fly around. Let's see all that detail there. Okay, so those are the ones that I've embedded here. Uh, Is this one different? Well, that's just more of the zip one, I think. Let me just scroll through this one fast. Oh, these are just other people's town, other things, children build their own towns. Oh, that was my jail over there. Oh, here's some of the mobs. Here, I think I'll kill all the mobs here. Uh, yeah, killed 103 mobs. Oh, then there's all kinds of bulletin boards and posts. Everybody, the moderators and me put stuff up there different commands. You can use these slash commands for different things. I'll go through all that. Oh, here's how log block works. So if you want to see, this is how the SQL server works. So I go up and I stick this magic pick in a block and I can see who has been doing what. So like I create, I'm 1E2E. That's my one of my aliases. I had another one where I just pretended I was a, a no rank new person that didn't speak English. And then I spied on everybody running around. Um, so see, I'm, I'm a slash log block rollback player 1E2E, which is mine, and then an area of a certain radius of blocks, and then it undoes that and asks me if I'm sure, yes. So you see how the SQL server works and logging things. That's it. I think the little prisons over here too, you can see sometimes. Oh, here, here's a little jail, I think. Yeah, so this is where people go if I catch them griefing. They can't get out until I let them out or I have a timer. I think I forget how I did it so many days. Jump on the steps. See how that works. 
And there's a portal down to hell or something. I forget what that is. The end world. World end, yeah. So you have to fight that giant flying thing flying around in here. The dragon. Yeah, the dragon. Yeah. Not only when you go through one of those portals, you're supposed to go to the nether. That was, uh, yeah, that was supposed it to be. It was the end. Yeah, uh, so I forget how we did it. I don't think the game actually ended there. We overrode it somehow, I forget. Yeah, I, 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 I don't remember, it was 10 years ago. But you can ask the guy in the back there, he wrote all stuff. 10 years ago, right? Yeah. But maybe somebody could show you around Joseph the, the new thing they have over there. I haven't seen it. You know, go see that. Who, Kelsey, do you work on the new one or? Uh, no, I, I, I haven't gotten on it yet. Who, who's, what students are the administrators um, of that? It would be the Computer Science Club, I believe. Okay. Has the Minecraft one. Okay. I haven't I'm okay. actually need to put a check on that. Okay. And then, yeah, I knew, I, I'll ask him. I, I thought there were students involved with Ron and administrators. Yes, yeah. It takes a while to to be the administrator, you know, if you have a world server, I think it's whitelisted though, which then you don't have to watch what people are doing, messing everything up, which is nice. Or you might still. Okay, so that was Minecraft, what we did in Minecraft. And let me go, uh, and, and there's other ones you can find on my YouTube channel, and a bunch of stuff in there. So let me go back in here. Science. Wait a second now. Got to get these uh, controls. Bear with me for a second. There's a scroll bar up here for the zoom settings. It's on top of everything. And it's a hide floating media controls. Okay. And so, um, yeah, so this is my YouTube server and the playlists. And there's another one playing here someplace. Hold on. And a bunch of other stuff. Where that is? Oh, it's here. Okay. And so, yeah, the playlists, um, I'm gonna go back to the architectural page and show you the other things students have done. So you'll find, the, these are the playlists, yeah, the playlist, uh, there's 46 high-tech intro lectures, 31 advanced lectures, including robotics, machine intelligence, and supercomputer design and stuff. And then high-tech student works, and then architectural lectures, and there's 38 in there, including, uh, oh no, 73 architectural student works, including other Minecraft things and other Revit things. So we won't go through all that. Um, but I do want to show you a little more in here. And so the evolution, we were in here in architecture, student projects, and we're coming back from long ago until now. Um, some of the first uses of Revit when we first got a couple of versions of that, uh, this student from Czechoslovakia went on to get his PhD in something I forget now. Uh, and then she did, a, a, her house was actually disturbed, beach house was destroyed during the Hurricane Sandy and she was renovating that. So that was some of the very first Revit from long ago. Uh, then we had the uh, Trucker Wellness Center and uh, that was done in Revit. And we gave away $5,500 in prizes for that through the social enterprise. We did some things in Africa uh, with some, some of the government people came in here from uh, Sierra Leone uh, when they were dealing with uh, Ebola. And then we did this thing here. So we had 22 judges and a competition for the first, you know, after Minecraft, the first Revit doing sports fitness and wellness center thing. We took the 1999 master plan ideas and we uh, got organized as students. And then I, I lobbied some of the administration and the trustees at one point also. And then I think it had some effect of actually getting a real sports fitness and wellness center. Uh, we spent 22 million, 26 million, we could have had a regulation size track that we rented out, but uh, the budgets were tight then. So for 26 million, we built, built something, but this was some of the beginnings of it. Uh, one of the students went on here to get his master's in architecture based on some of this stuff. Um, Cal Graziano. And then other students in uh, other courses using Revit in, uh, in different ways. Um, green communities. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, this was uh, retirement communities and uh, the Olympics, the 2020 Olympic facilities. So this was made you know, before they were COVID came on. This was all done in, uh, this is done. These were all 2016 
projects in, in anticipation of the 2020, whoops, in anticipation of the 2020 coming up. So students, students, uh, things in there. All right, so, um, so yeah, architecture nowadays uh, has high tech in it and more, more than you would think. So if you're going to do professional architecture, you use what's called Revit, not SketchUp, that's a whole other thing I'll show you. SketchUp is nice and quick and uh, we have a guest lecture tutorial on that. But Revit has a concurrent database that runs with it, and that's important. So every graphic element in Revit is attached to data in a database that you can use to generate to create specifications to give to contractors to bid on. And that information is fed in from uh, Suites Catalog, for example, where manufacturers put all their files in there ready to go ported into Revit. So when you design something in Revit, it can be built. And there are materials out there that's, that manufacturers can supply and that contractors can bid on. And that costs money. So those, those licenses cost typically $5,000 per license in a professional architectural office. We get them for free here because we're uh, educational. And uh, uh, so from Autodesk, we also have 3D Studio Max. So you'll see uh, animations now also in Lumion. So we have these gaming engines for animating and you can port the Revit uh, with people walking around um, that uh, uh, you take your, your, your 3D renderings and you can have uh, it animated in either 3D Studio Max or Lumion. Uh, and we have the, both of those now. And originally we didn't have all that. And I don't believe I showed a video in here of uh, that I'm recording of that. Um, they say I'm still recording, I believe. Sure here. Uh, yes, yeah, still recording. Good. Um, I want to just show whoops, a little bit of uh, of that, and then in this video here. So I wanted to show an animation in Revit. Let me think again where that would be in here. Uh, animation with people in it, or just an animation in Revit. Let me go to student projects again. Um. Let's see, people, one of these, uh, da, 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 trying to remember where there's people walking around one of these. Um, well, I could show an animation, any of a, any way of a walkthrough. Um, which one here? It's one that said animation only here somewhere. Where did that go? Press, da, 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 bear with me. I'll count to 10 here if I can't find it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I had one that was just an animation. Oh, well, here, Cal Graziano on the Sports Fitness and Wellness Center. So he was one of the, the people who did the competition we did in a class and then went on to do uh, directed studies with me and some other studio classes and then went on, actually worked in New York City and then Midwest and then went back to, to college after three years of working and then went to grad schools now at University of Michigan. But this is what he did. Oh, actually, here we go, animation only, or I do fast animation. This was the first one he did. And if you, if you saw the animation that was released by the professional architects, uh, Canon design, by the way, and I met with them a couple of times, they're out of Pittsburgh. Um, Marshall Craft designed the building right here, the Master Center. But this was Canon design, or th this, the one that Canon design did, the animation they released right before uh, breaking ground to build this building looked really like this quite a bit, but this is completely by student. Oh, there's people walking around. So you see, you can put people walking around. And I believe he ported into 3D Studio Max. No, Lumion. They said they're up in the corner, Lumion. You don't change. Oh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me stop here. Thank you. Share screen again here.
And so uh, whatever I was saying there, here's what it looks like. So this started beginning here. So this, this is a professional rendering by a student while he was a student here. Uh, and one of the first to really get Revit going um, long ago, like 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, I forget now. <clears throat> So you see this is Lumion, one of the ways of animating your Revit. So that you feed that in. Now that's not by Autodesk. Autodesk, by the way, is supposed to be a great company to work for. They're the ones who create this software. And uh, they have architects and uh, computer science, computer engineering people there. So when I'm on sabbatical a year from now, I'll be writing a book on Frank Red Wright and developing a course in computer game design and virtual reality. Uh, I've been debating whether to drop the virtual reality part because I wanted to have it so everybody could use it. And uh, it might be tricky because it's gonna be a core course and I want the students to learn some initial programming and have something that they can do. But, um, and I've looked at, courses in other schools. Our Stanford University has every student buy their own Oculus Rift, uh, but that's, it was 500 when I bought it, it's down to 300 now, but that's a bit much to ask every student to get in a core class, not a general thing. Maybe. And once I offer the core class, either I or one of the computer science faculty will offer, uh, you know, a, a, an intense programming class in computer uh, game design, but I'm going to be doing something uh, as an introductory thing because, uh, it's, it's a new field for me. I do have a lot of experience in computing, but not uh, in game design or virtual reality. And I program in a number of languages, but still, it's something new. So this is our sports fitness and wellness center, or, or a rendition of what it could like look like before the, the architects that were commissioned to do it even got involved. So I've sat in meetings with the professional architects and they were billing at, uh, well, it, they don't actually get that, but the principals would bill at $250 an hour and any other junior architects at $100 an hour that came with them plus travel time. So it's, uh, it's a good field if you can get into it and it's, uh, you got to have some talent as well as technical skills to do architectural things. Um, but it can eventually pay off. It's much quicker to make money right away if you're in computing or engineering, but it equalizes over time for those who stay with the architecture. So yeah, we, um, this initially was going to be in the 1999 master plan, just like a practice bubble for the soccer team up by, the students know here when I'm talking about the quads, up on the other side of the quads, uh, it just showed that. And then uh, as I worked with my students over a number of years, I would invite the different deans in and we'd walk up to the site and I'd say, well, look how far away this thing is. And so uh, we were for at, some, at one point trying to make it merge with uh, the present student center, which I was involved with in the year 2000, we renovated the student center for 12 million. But I was hoping to get all the athletic facilities, so the you know sports, fitness, and wellness connected to the cafeteria and the pool, uh, like a couple of other schools that I've visited, uh, comparable schools. And it's nice in the winter time to have all the facilities together. But we ended up with a really nice, huge facility now that uh, rents out for very very lucrative, lucrative uh, rental fees for camps and such. Uh, I saw a cheerleading camp one time and uh, there must have been a couple thousand people in there with a charge, you know, like $15 a person to get in. And that was just one day. We have kitchen facility in there. Uh, different sports teams have their coaches and locker rooms in here, not all of them. Some stayed in the basketball or in the uh, Thompson gym. But again, this is a student's rendition that influenced the 
actual architects that led to a $26 million development that doesn't look too different from, from what was built. So, um, uh, so let me go back in the course here and we have to wrap up here in this course. So uh, this, this course is part of all the high tech stuff here and you can see this direct into the YouTube channel in the high tech. Um, so the course we're in now is uh, syllabi. So I've been teaching for a long time, um, since 1988, 40 courses. And we're in this intro course here. And during COVID, I started putting things online, which I didn't, I was reluctant to do. I didn't really believe in online teaching for a long time because you lose the face-to-face -face kind of stuff. But in COVID, we had no choice. And now I have to wean myself off of the screens, uh, although I'm kind of getting used to doing it. So we're in here now and for students in here, uh, I printed out what we did at the very beginning here with the virtual reality. I want to have a little discussion next time, but if uh, I won't make this an assignment, but next time I'd just like to talk about some of those things that you saw in the very beginning here. I'll just show you again here. Uh, so we, we looked at this, uh, we looked at this, and then there's the summary of uh, class discussion. Well, this was summary of previous class discussion. I want to have some uh, discussion in here and, and see how you feel. And this is one reason I don't want to have a multiple choice final exam, because I want to hear your thoughts with little essays on, you know, what, is, is this good? Is this bad? Or, you know, what is good and bad? What are your opinions on this? And so we look at three different kinds of paper looking at virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, as well as uh, its influence on game, uh, game design and how that's uh, evolving. All right, so let me uh, close here. Let me uh, stop sharing. Uh, and let me now stop recording.